Amen. We thank the Lord for another brand new day that we have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to be. My title for today is weaknesses. We're going to point out. It's kind of. It's not really a message, but it's kind of. Uh, I'm kind of going to come away of teaching on today. We're going to be coming. We're going to be coming from the book. Two areas. Actually, it's going to make it real brief and short. Matthews chapter 8, 5, chapter, chapter 8, verses 5 to 8, and 8, 14 to 16. Our first point, and our second point is, we're going to be focusing on the word and angels. The second point is going to be coming from St. John Chapter 5, verses 1 through 8, dealing with the pool of Bethesda. And we're going to be, as I said, we're mainly going to be focused on angels on today. But we're going to be focused on the weaknesses of Satan, actually. That's actually my title for this teaching on today. And before we go into the teaching, we're going to be, uh, we're going to do, start off with prayer first. Let's pray before God. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for praise and we glorify your name. We repent of anything we've done, said, or thought of. It is displeasing in your sight and your presence. For God realizing the presence of you, there's fullness of joy. And we know the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, God, we pray for your divine favor. We pray, God, for your divine presence and that your word should have full course in this teaching on today. And this we praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Amen. So I said before, we're going to be focused on the word and also angels. Somebody shout angels. Bless the Lord. I'm going to move me out the way briefly. You can see this. We're not going to be coming from this text. But I just want you to know so you can see where we're coming from on today. Amen. Just to show you some scriptures. Now I know there are other verses in the Bible that's dealing with. There's a lot of weaknesses against the devil, but I want to focus on two of them on today. Is that all right? And uh, so, and before I do that, I'm going to read, if you will, uh, something in the Bible dictionary. Let me put this mouse down for a minute. Okay. So now I looked up the word. Angels and a Bible dictionary is one one of the Bibles I dictionaries I use, and I'm gonna just read this on today, okay? Angels, because we know in short they're messengers basically, but just uh just to see what the uh, a Bible dictionary has to say about it. Angels, a supernatural or heavenly being. A little lower in dignity than man. Uh, angels are created beings. Psalms, there's some reference scriptures. Psalms 148, 2 and 5, Colossians 1 and 6. Scriptures does not tell us the time of the creation, but it was certainly before the creation of man. Job 38 and 7. They are described as spirits, not bad spirits, but good spirits. Hebrews 1 and 14, although without a bodily organism, they have often revealed themselves in bodily form of man's. Jesus said unto they, do not marry and do not die. So angels will live forever. You can't kill an angel. All right. Luke, here's some reference scriptures. Luke 20, 34, and 36. They therefore consist a company. Like, like you got legions of demons, you got legions of angels too. So I want you to think about uh how when we when we did go, what would still be here to fight against the devil? It won't be your building, it won't be your membership, it won't even be you. But there are two, there are two main things. There are other things besides this now. 
So I'm not saying these are the only things. The word number one and number two angels. Angels will, angels will live forever and the word will never perish. Okay. They therefore consist of companies not in a race development from one original pair. All right. So we know. So this is a brief overview of what angels are capable of. And so my my main thought is how I want you to think about what will still be here when you dead and gone. What what is the devil afraid of? What is the devil weakness? Some of his weaknesses. Many times we like to focus on what the devil did, but I'd rather focus on I want us to think about not so much as a on a defense way, but as an offense. You need to study and learn your enemy's weaknesses. And that's my main point in doing this teaching on today. Amen. Just a refresher. Praise God. So I'm not saying I'm not coming at you all like you don't know. I'm just doing one to uh, uh, reiterate. Amen. How the enemy will try to strategize and how the enemy will try to attack. And so he has the, 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 the Satan, heaven, Jesus has angels. Working on your behalf, Amen. You can be how many? How many know that you are the angels that God appoint over your life? Glory to God. Okay, so let's look at the scripture on today. Praise God. All right, we're gonna as I said before, we're gonna be coming from Matthew's chapter eight, and we're gonna start. We're gonna start at verse five. Okay, let's look at this here on today. This was dealing with centenarian, centenarian so servants, uh, so as soldiers. All right, verse five. And when Jesus was entered into the Capernaum, they came unto him a centurion, beseeching him. Verse six, and saying, Lord, my servant lie at home, not in the church, but at home, sick, unt sick of of the palsy. Grievously tormented. So this was really a super bad situation. It had been in the hospital, it had been in ICU. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Jesus replied. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should have come under my roof. And when I saw that person, I mean my, my imagination got to thinking. Maybe he felt like Jesus was too hierarchy or too superior to come there. Or maybe his house was a mess. I don't know. Uh, didn't say that. But, but then he said, here's his problem. But speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. So he had enough faith in God's word that God did not have to, Jesus didn't have to really physically be there. But all he had to do was speak the word only. And so it is and on today. Amen. He don't have to be there in your city, in your town, or in the hospital, or in ICU, or in your room, in an emergency room, whatever your, wherever you at, or wherever your loved one is at. All he had to do is speak the word on him. Verse 9, let's work. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one man, go, and he go it. And to another come and he cometh, and to my servant doeth this and he doeth it. So he no, still know he needed Jesus, even though he had soldiers, he was a leader, praise God. Amen. But he still needed God to speak and decree and declare, amen, over this situation. Somebody said, Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, so that was verses five. I went no further. Now we're gonna go to verse number fourteen. All right, verse 14 says, uh, back I'm going to read, I'm going to read 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way, and as thou hast, beloved, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed in that same hour. Self same hour. Verse 14, and when Jesus was come into Peter's house, here's another Example, he saw his wife, mother's laid and sick of a fever. Okay, 
almost like COVID-19. And he touched her hand. And guess what happened? And the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto him. But we see here, he touched him in this case, but we know the fever left him because of the power of God's word. Somebody said, thank the limit of the Lord. Now I'm going to read, let's see. All right, let's see. Okay, right, that's far enough. So we see, this is just a couple of quick examples how he spoke and decreed a word and the word did the manifestation. God's word will never return unto the void, but the Bible said it will accomplish what it was sent to do. All you got to do, my beloved, is speak and decree the word of God and it shall come to pass. Satan don't want you to know that. Satan don't want you to study the word. Satan don't want you to meditate on the word. He know, praise God, if you get this word down in your spirit, praise the name of the Lord, something's going to happen. Something good is going to happen. Transformation will happen when you get the word of God in your heart. That's our main assignment as preachers and evangelists in the fivefold ministry is to get the word. How, how We want to get the word, word off this book, this Bible, and we want to get into the hearts of the, these your people. Now, I often notice sometimes when people are preaching and I kind of glance around in the audience sometimes and I notice how many people don't have a physical Bible with them. In fact, some don't even use it. I know we got Bibles on, the cell, on our cell phones now, but some don't even read the uh they don't follow on what the preacher's saying on, on even in, in their cell phone. But you should have, it's, it's something about seeing the word. Not just hearing it, but seeing the word too. Somebody said, bless the name of the Lord. Okay, so that's our main, that's our first point, dealing with the word. Amen. We see here in our, in our text how he just spoke the word. Amen. Person was sick and he, he had enough faith. Amen. And in fact, one part of the Bible said, it's according to your faith. Being unto you is according to your faith. All you got to do is have faith. The Bible said, if you have faith in the size of a mother, you can say unto the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Okay, so now let's go into the book of St. John. I told you it won't be for you very long. The book of St. John chapter 5. We're going to look at that on today. And this is dealing uh, when, the, when the scribes had challenged Jesus' faith. Praise God. Amen. Uh on the Sabbath day, actually. In fact, I'm going I'm to start it here, right? Chapter 5, we're going to read it, starting verse 1. Okay. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up, up to Jerusalem. Two. Now there is in Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in a Hebrew tongue, Pathesium, having five porches. Somebody shout five porches. In these lay a great multitude of important folks. A blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. They were waiting, praise God, for their deliverance. They were waiting to be set free. They were waiting to be set up, to, to be released from this bondage, from this captivity. Okay, so let's, the verse 4 says, for an angel, see the word, circle the word angel. For an angel went down at a certain season. Somebody shout certain season. Into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole. Of whatsoever disease. Yeah. So whatever issue he or she didn't, didn't, the Bible did not state the name of the individuals or the person, whether it be he or she, the gender, or not. It just said, so whoever was made, whoever at the, now had to wait on the angel now. So can't you imagine at this pool, I'm pretty sure it was like probably, it didn't state how many people was there. Uh, I'm sure, pretty sure people knew, came with expectations, amen, that they would get delivered, but they knew. Amen. They had to be the first one to jump in when the angels came down to stir up the water. Somebody said to stir the pool. All right. Then, all right, we read that. They said, now he said, oh, so whatever disease or whatever sickness, whatever plague, amen, praise God, whatever uh, curse that the enemy has vexed them with, the angel assignment was to stir up the water. Now, it's up to them to jump in. At the point in time. Amen. Praise God. So 
your deliverance is based on your timing with God. All right. Let's look at this verse five. And a certain man, it, it wasn't a female, but a certain man, not a boy, praise God. A certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and eight years. That's a long time to be waiting on something. How many, how many been waiting on something? Amen. 15 years, six years, five years, four years, 20 years, etc., etc. Amen. You might have been waiting longer than that for God to deliver, for God to set free, for God to uh, uh, to make a way out of no way. Bless his name. That's a long time. So I can imagine being in that person's situation. Here you has been waiting. Praise God. For God timing, for God to dispatch his angels. Amen. Now let's read a little further. Verse 6. And when and when Jesus saw him, Jesus was looking. Jesus is looking at your sister, but he's watching you. He he sees your request. All right. And Jesus saw him. He, why would Jesus point? Why would Jesus single that person out? All right. It, 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 for a reason. Okay, look at this up. And Jesus saw him lie and knew. He he know your issue. He know your dilemma. He knew that he had been now a long time. That kind of jumped out at me. A long time in this case, waiting. Amen. Waiting for deliverance. Waiting with high expectation that this is my time. This is my breakthrough. Amen. I'm going to move. I'm going to jump out in this water. And as soon as I know the angel is coming, I'm going to get my deliverance. Okay. He said unto him, will, no, he singled him out in this picture. Will thou be made whole? Question mark. So, whoa. Question number, will thou, and he asking us the same thing today. Will thou be made whole? In fact, that's my, I, I want to use that in my subtitle. But will thou be made whole, my beloved, my sister, my brother? Amen. Will thou be delivered? It is something, it's according to your faith. In fact, one of the part of the Bible said, and he saw their faith. So sometimes it's not the issue itself, but he's looking at your faith so that you will know Amen. That God is able to deliver you from that situation where they prayed. Somebody said, Bless the Lord. Here, now, here is a, here's an excuse that he gave in verse 7. Y'all watch this here. The important man said, answer man answered him, Sir, I, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. I, it must have been handicapped. You know, couldn't walk or whatever, couldn't move hardly. But while I am coming, another step, step it down before me. So he had some, uh, probably had some crutches or something, something that would slow him down. Jesus said, this is Jesus. Jesus said unto him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. That's what he's saying to us on today. Take up thy bed and walk. Get up out of that situation. It's time for you to get your deliverance. It's time for you to make me made whole. Amen. You've been suffering too long. Amen. This body is amen. Praise God. Stop making excuses, but press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling. Somebody said, thank the name of the Lord. Amen. So here, again, my main focus is two points, the word and the angels. Amen. Satan knows, praise God, that the word, he fear the word. And he fear angels. Amen. Because it's going to be the angels that's going to separate the just from the just from the, from the uh, uh, at the last day. Amen. They're the one that's going to be in charge. Somebody said, thank you, Lamb Lord. Amen. So that's our little meaning teaching on today. Amen. You all be blessed and stay with God. We out on today. Let's see if I can stop this. Okay.